subject of electronic harassment, which I think mm -hmm. I would like to rephrase as electronic terrorism, uh, that also is something that you have researched and you've spoken about in the past, uh, but most people are not familiar with it. Uh, what role does electronics play in controlling populations? Everything. Um, our radio frequency is being weaponized into directed energy weapons to be used on civilians and all living things. And would, you, would, you, would, you, would you agree that we are basically electrical or our nature, like our bodies, they function electrically, like our brain signals are electrical signals. So, so controlling somebody with the electronics by sending some sort of you know electronic signal into a brain would be the equivalent of sending a signal into your computer and making it do something that you wanted to do. Would that be a, a, a good analogy? Well, life has evolved in on Earth um, under the uh, the conditions of the Earth's magnetic field. So mm -hmm. those are waves. Now right. Einstein's formula, E equals M C squared energy equals mass times a constant squared, which is the speed of light, right. photons. Um, that basically is the, it's the energy regime uh, for the whole universe. And what it means is that everything in the universe is either in waveforms, light, uh, radio, whatever, or it's matter. And it's this interplay of those two forms of energy that make life possible. Now, our bodies are simply photons. We're just a pile of photons. And it is wavelengths, it's energy, it's um, uh, frequencies uh, that control and synchronize our uh, biological system and make life possible. And so the way that messages or, yes, messages travel through our body, it's not chemical reactions. Right. They're, they're too slow. It's infrared. And that's mm -hmm. why they have a whole uh, satellite system. It's called... Um, SARS. It's called SARS, but there's another... Um, it's the... I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, anyway, that ur iridium... It's the iridium, iridium, yeah. the iridium, iridium. That, that's right. right. That was back in the nineties or something. That the, the government, fiasco. yes, the right. government made a fortune, made a uh, put a fortune into it, developing it. Then they said, "Oh, we can't use it." They gave it to Bill Gates and Microsoft. Well, guess what? It's really for. It's really for attacking people from space with infrared, and infrared is. The um, the message flow through our bodies, telling right, right, right. organs when to do what, telling cells when to do what, whatever. So our bodies are completely controlled, managed, uh, everything through frequencies. And all they have to do is do research on the natural frequencies in all parts of the body and uh, and then mimic that. And that's what they're doing. And algorithms, uh, which were developed, um, it's a mathematical language that they use in factories on assembly lines, for instance, to give commands to the machinery on uh, manufacturing, making things instead of having people do it. And um, so at Davis in the 60s, when I was a student there, there was a monkey colony hidden out in a peach orchard. And the students who worked there would come back and they'd say the monkeys all have the top of their heads cut off, their wires coming out of their brains, and some of them they'll give commands to, and all they do is climb up and down uh, inside their cage all day long. Now, a very famous Spaniard who came to the United States, joined the U.S. Army, his name is Aquino, he got real involved, I'm sure he was sent by the Jesuits to come and do this in the U.S., but he was very involved in the biological, the biology of aggression, of, uh, of 
of um, doing uh, learning how to control animals and then use it to uh, apply it to humans and he did this very famous demonstration on television he went into a bull ring and he had a little um, controller in his hand and the there was a wire that was put into the bull's brain that uh, he could transmit to and this bull came charging at him with right. these huge horns and he just went beep with one button and the bull stopped and turned around and walked away. Became a pussycat, yeah. It t turned him into right, a pussycat. Right. Now they have these microwave systems in the sports stadiums now where they have huge um, collections of people watching football or whatever and um, they can turn these on when the crowd starts rioting and people just are turned into that bull, bull, and they just they just slowly walk out of the the the. They just stop rioting and they slowly walk out and go to their cars and get in and drive away. It's in is the sports that, is, stadium. Is this, is this technology in your research? Uh, would you say that this is in the process of being developed, or has it already been? Oh no, no. Refined? This is way, 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 way in advance, and what we've been doing here in Berkeley uh, for the last uh, few years is observing all of this being, uh, all these pieces being integrated and put together, and. Um, the uh, chancellor of the University of California at Davis campus holds 19 patents on these frequencies, antennas, and the integration of all these systems. She is now the chancellor of the University of California at Davis. Uh, she said, I'm Greek. Uh, she is the one who had the Occupy movement um, on the Davis campus. All these students were sitting there completely quiet. No one said a word. They were, they were uh, demonstrating um, part of the Occupy movement, which a color is, it's a co color revolution. Um, and she uh, came out at like midnight or two in the morning from the administration building where she'd been meeting with other administrators and she walks silently like this sinister um, um, uh, ghost or something through the crowd and she was looking at the students. She went back in the building without saying a word and she ordered the police to pepper spray all those students. Now, she, uh, she has the patents to 19, uh, I mean, she, is, she holds 19 patents uh, on these technologies that are now being rolled out. And what I'm seeing is that the Lawrence Berkeley Lab has a smart meter research program going on in the civilian sector of, day, of Berkeley. And the universities are actively training students, and they have been for decades, to go into workplaces, they're trained in hacking, uh, they're trained in um, mind control, they're trained in all kinds of uh, disruptive activities that create chaos, they're trained in spying, um, and of course they're part of the University of California system the rest of their lives because everyone is tracked by UC once you um, work for them or you're a student here. and. What we're seeing is that all of a sudden, two years ago, uh, smart meters were slapped on people's houses without their permission. It was done covertly. It was a military operation. And it's happening across the United States, but I think it's the most intense in California. And this happened when Janet Napolitano, who was Secretary of Homeland Security, was hired by the University of California without any search for any other person to hire. And um, she has now been the president of the University of California uh, for uh, almost two years. In October, it'll be two years. She brought Homeland Security and FEMA with her. They're doing the whole rollout for the United States here first in the San Francisco Bay Area and in California. And what I've seen the students do, first they got the iPhones. 
these 5G phones. Right. And they have flat array antennas in them that the Navy developed. They're very, very powerful, and each iteration of cell phone, they're miniaturized more, but they're also made more powerful. So in the, um, the G5 and the G6 now, there are nine or ten of these tiny antennas inside that phone, and it's actually a, an array of antennas that give you a more powerful signal and other more options. And Oh, by the way, sorry, just to interrupt here, there's, there's a recent uh, movie called uh, The King's Man or something, I believe, okay? And the premise of that movie was that this uh, megalomania billionaire, he gave away free cell phones. Yes. And what, Okay, so what he was going to do was he was going to send out the signal that was going to turn these people into all into stark raving lunatics, and they were going to go and uh, yes. kill each other, and it would be chaos everywhere. So, uh, you know, these stories that come out of Hollywood, they do have some basis in reality, and they're not just fiction. And so that's exactly, I suppose... Uh, Somebody somewhere has a button that can be pressed and suddenly out of five million iPhones, of which I happen to have one, is, uh, you know, it, it'll drive people cuckoo and we we'll have the zombie apocalypse on our hand. That's exactly what they did in Rwanda. The organized crime... Okay, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Hold, hold that thought for just a minute. I'll be right back. So let's talk about Rwanda. Actually, yes. You sent me the link and I read that story and it was very, very interesting now uh, in rwanda apparently like when uh, the story goes that uh, one tribe rose up against the other and they slaughtered a million of each other the hutus one, and the tutus right tutsis. and the tutsis and the hutus or whatever you yes. know, and uh, but but uh, there was another version of the story that they had these uh, special forces that went around with these electronic sound cannons or whatever and they drove uh, they were the frequencies were targeted towards these people that made one group very aggressive and one group very passive right is that the story you're referring to yes the what actually happened was that uh, Russian mafia decided to loot the wealth of all of the colonials in Rwanda and have all of them murdered. So they used um, organized crime, Russian mafia, in the Ukraine. And this young man, his mother was a, a masseuse or something at a spa, and her boyfriend was one of these organized criminals working for an oligarch. And um, he was sent uh, this uh, organized criminal uh, uh, procured this young man when he was 13 or 14. He uh, mentored him. He trained him with um, headsets on and, and programmed his brain w in front of a computer. And he sent him as the head of a team when he was 24 years old down to Rwanda. And he was instructed to loot and kill every single colonial and all of their families in Rwanda. We're and talking about white people here. None, these these are, are not just black tribal people. These are white people. The black, uh, the black war was uh, a, an antenna event controlled through antennas, and it was to cover up the slaughter of the white people. Right, right. So when this young man arrived with his team, there were antennas all over the place. They were, they'd never been there before. They were there uh, just for this event with the right frequencies and in the right positions and everything. And um, he described the slaughter and he said they turned those antennas on and in two days every white person was dead. There were mothers in their kitchen, white mothers, killing their own babies and children. They were killing their husbands. There were neighbors killing other neighbors. Um, and then, of course, these uh, teams, his wasn't the only team. They were there killing and slaughtering as well. And he said, we stole all the cars. We put them on ships and sent them to Europe. Uh, they were resold there. 
um, we were told to go to the banks and remove all the documents and all of the securities and the bonds and everything from the safety deposit boxes as well as all the gold and jewelry, anything right. of value. They cleaned that country absolutely clean and stole the wealth of that entire generation and murdered all of the white colonials there. And he said, and then uh, I went back to the Ukraine. And, and the United Nations stood by while all this was While it all happened, they were, uh, yes. They were told to stand down. This was yes. a Canadian general who was commanding there, and he, he, has, yes. he had some very, and, he was ordered to stand down. And I just want to make it clear that Michel Shostakovsky, who is uh, a big name in alternative media, and he's from Ottawa, his father... Evgeny Shasadovsky was from Rostov-on-Don and they're a very, very special family because his father was one of the founders and the biggest movers and shakers behind the formation of the United Nations. Oh, Michel really? Shasadovsky is not a good guy and I have been shafted by him everywhere I've been, war crime tribunal in Malaysia, I was going to testify on depleted uranium used in Iraq and Palestine, and he absolutely shafted me. He's a yeah. very, very dangerous person, and um, I think people should know that because these people are so clever in the UN. They make you think they're helping you, and right, what they've right. just gotten through doing is genociding everyone in your country. Yeah. They're very, very clever. So, um, so anyway, the Rwanda massacres and the looting of and murder of all of the uh, the white people is a really good example of these frequencies and how powerful they are and how they will use them in the future. They're going to loot the United States. They're going to loot all those countries in Europe. And there's going to be a theater of tension already between the Muslims and the Christians that will cover uh, these slaughters and the looting of all the wealth of these countries. And the U.S. they're setting up the, the race war, the blacks against yes. the whites, uh, uh, yes. or the Hispanics against uh, each other. Men That's against women, lesbians against straights, right. uh, that whole phony um, uh, homosexual... Um, I'm not opposed to homosexuals at all, but I'm talking about the, the politicized ones who it's not about sexuality at all. And no, a lot no, of the them. The gay agenda is very dangerous. Yeah. Very, very dangerous. It's very, 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 very dangerous. Yeah. The, the yeah. University of California is actively sending retired professors who have turned gay just to go to China and recruit Chinese gays, and they're bringing them over here by the boatload. But what, going back to these technologies and how powerful they are, what I've seen now is since Janet Napolitano arrived two years ago in Berkeley, all of a sudden these light poles went up with flat array antennas on them. They're very powerful. They're linked up to the smart meters, to the cell phones, to um, the antennas, the antenna networks. And the students are being trained to use their cell phones to communicate with the light poles. This happened to me. I was attacked by my next door neighbor who's running an oracle operation next door uh, to attack me with all these frequencies. And she, I, I spotted her, I was walking down the sidewalk in Berkeley in an area I never go to, and she was standing there with a, another male student, and she's talking to him and pointing to me. And she didn't want me to recognize her, so she moved and hid behind a car. So he's standing under the light post, and he's got his cell phone in his hand, and he's watching me, and as I approached, he pushed the buttons on his cell phone, and I started getting blasted from the overhead street light. And every street light I passed for four more blocks until I got to the bench for the at the bus stop, every street light attacked me, and I was crippled by the time I got to the bench and sat down. It took eight hours to get that frequency network off of me. It was horrible. 
and um, now I've seen the students coming up with their cell phones. These are students who've attacked me in the neighborhood, and they were hooking, they were programming their cell phones to the smart meter on my house and other houses. They just walk up and do it, and they can attack anyone through the cell phones and the smart meters, and they have also put the internet through the sewers here so they can attack you through the drains and the faucets in your house. And they transmit mood frequencies, they transmit all kinds of mind control frequencies through your own sewer system. And these students now are hooked up to the smart meters on people's houses they don't even know they're hooked up to the, the lights overhead. They're hooked up to central headquarters on the campus. They are set up in apartment buildings where they are trained and groomed uh, to do all of this. And this is just the Occupy movement. It's the color revolution that's coming to every city in America and potentially every city in the world. And it's the young people they have hijacked our children, our adult children. They're not our children anymore. And they will turn them against their own parents, their own families, and their own co-workers.